Hi, good morning. I just wanted to show you that it's such a beautiful day outside my studio window to, today. So it's a perfect, perfect inspiration for the little winter painting that I'm going to uh, uh, show you, that I have taped for you in my last uh, class. So enjoy and happy December. Okay, so here's our little winter landscape. We masked out where we wanted the snow to be the brightest. And then we're going to do exactly like we did in this little Santa painting. Just going to hold it under. Uh, we're going to wet the whole thing, slap some color on, and throw some salt at it and cross our fingers, right? Okay. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Uh, so, again, lots of water on my big brush. Don't fiddle around. For these, especially these stages, stages don't fiddle around with little tiny brushes. Just get the big brush out and uh, just uh, go to town. We wanna make sure that everything gets nice and wet. And it's important to me that I give the paper a little time to soak in the water. And now is, is, you're gonna see exactly like we saw earlier, because I'm just, you know, wetting the front. The fibers on the front are soaking up all that nice paper um, and water. And it, it's probably gonna start bubbling a little bit this way. And not to worry, don't when you do it I usually you could have you could have while your board and your paper was still right you could have wet the back side first mm -hmm. and then flipped it over to wet the front but I never think of that so I have to go to my little spray bottle I use my mister bottle for that and I just spray it on the back don't put your wet paper down like this mm -hmm. it's gonna pick up all the dirt from your board when it's wet don't do that I'm speaking from experience, as you know. <laughs> All right, so now the little cousins on the back, they're happy. And you can ask you also, you know, some, I've seen uh, painters use a sponge to wet their, you can spray it, and now I sprayed it a little bit because I don't really mind if it's a little uneven, if it's really wet some places and not so wet other places. I don't mind. In this stage, other times I would mind, but here I don't mind. And then I can just, you know, even it out with a brush. There you go. You want it really wet. Now it's really wet and it's kind of soaking, sucking, you know, to the board because it's wet on the backside. So it's excellent. All right. Just one more go. I take my time with this stage, especially in a painting like this where that I'm putting in the whole back on in one swoop. Wet into wet, this is called in watercolor tech terms. All right, so then I'm gonna start with my cobalt blue. So I mixed my colors already. Cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue. I let them be in the same mixing area because I don't mind them mixing. I have my yellow, I have my pink. Don't worry about this dark one. I'm not gonna use that yet. That's gonna be for those dark branches underneath that are sticking out under the snow. And that'll be much later. And uh, you know, I do have a little bit of that opera rose just in case I and I do think I want that. So a little bit of the cobalt blue, and I don't know why, but I do like to put them, put these colors on kind of a little bit of a horizontal, not horizontal, um, diagonal stroke. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a dynamic um, direction. Horizontal is calming. Yeah. Uh, and I can't, I can never remember what um, vertical is. It also yeah, has- Vertical is up and down. Yeah, it's up. Yeah, but it's it's like an emotion also that I can never remember. <laughs> it, I, I maybe I'll remember next time. All right, so that's cobalt blue. Okay. I'm gonna put a little bit more um, French ultramarine blue in and see when it's wet. You can't really do anything wrong because everything blends nicely. When it's this wet, you can't really mess it up too bad. Um, a little bit down here and I'm putting can you see I'm putting yeah. a little bit more of that dark around the house because I later I really want to push that house out mm -hmm. and by putting a little bit of a darker mm -hmm. color behind that roof line it's going to be a bigger contrast so I can already think about that already all right and then because it's just too boring just having blue everywhere I'm going to put a little bit of that opera rose in because I think that looks kind of good and uh, if you if that's not a color combination you like you don't have to um, and rinse that out 
and then I might go in just with a I, I might go in and take just a hint of that yellow transparent yellow on my tip here just around here I, I wouldn't mind it if it got a little kind of turquoisey around there mm. And I might, so now I made my brush thirsty so I can actually kind of lift out a little bit of color. There. And let's see, I think I'm gonna not, I don't wanna do it too dark here the first go around. I think this is good. That, that wasn't too bad, was it? No. And then, um, and you look it up because, because you know, I just remembered I want to have a little bit of that yellow light oh, reflected oh, in right. the um, oh, snow the underneath the windows. Right. Right. That's what I was thinking. I was like, hey, wait a minute, mm -hmm. make it a little bit lighter so that I can get that in. And then now it's you know, it's still wet, but it's beginning. Can you see it's not as shiny anymore? Mm -hmm. It's already the pigment and water Absolutely. sinking into the paper. I mean, you know, we live in a very dry climate. So, and so I could go in and find a couple of these shapes where I know that it's um, those branches, that snow laden branches. And I could go in and just try to lift out a little bit, some lighter spots. If you miss this, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. It's just, since I have the opportunity to do it, I think I want to do it. So up here too. And especially I'm doing it more in this area that's a little bit more in focus always, like it's closer to me. Mm -hmm. So I'll see a little bit more light there. I don't necessarily want to do it here because I don't want everything to be too busy. And in this area, it's really about this cabin and that white snow against a little bit, you know, those trees, they're kind of a little bit in the shadow the sun is going down. That's why we have these beautiful, you know, um, colors. And, um, and I'm not so worried about lifting out here at this stage because, you know, it's still wet, so it's not gonna hold any hard edges or anything. So, you know, I can't really mess it up too bad, hmm. is my thought. Are we supposed to um, trace with permanent marker? That no, 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 no. I Here, I mean, you could, no. but I would never do that at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, what I do sometimes with my paintings, if I'm not super thrilled with them, and yeah, if I'm not really that excited about them, think that they didn't turn out that great, then sometimes I'll take a permanent marker after it's all dried and I've painted everything, I've done everything I can with watercolor and I still kind of like, eh. Um, then I might go in, maybe I'll lift it out a little bit here too. Uh, then I'll go in with permanent marker and do some, don't outline every shape. Mm -hmm. Do thick, thin lines, broken lines and stuff like that. And you can actually sometimes save a painting by doing that. Uh, so can you see now those little markings that I scraped out, they kind of show up a little bit. That's all. It, I mean, don't get too nitty, nitty gritty on these little, it's not like you can see a whole lot on these little posts. They're just something dark. And it's kind of nice to have a little something going on. And that's why I also, I could totally have just mixed myself a dark brown and then put that on. But then everything is so much the same color. I find it a little boring. And while it's drying, and if I see that, some of it is a little too light, or maybe I want to darken a little bit under the snow a couple of places. I can go in while it's still damp and just run a little bit more in with a little bit more weight on the blue. The blue is the one that will give you the dark. And you can see, can you see how that then looks a little bit darker? Yeah. And so I'm gonna paint this and this that way. And I'll just do the horizontal ones and then I'll show you how to do the, the other ones. Okay? So that's easy enough. And I, I, once you get the, just even that in, it starts already looking more like something. You said you didn't have these on. Yeah, okay, so there's another Santa if somebody wants to do him. Yeah. 
salt. A ton of salt. So wet it, color it, and salt it? Yes, wet it, color it, salt it. And I try to just throw the salt on where the trees are. Okay. Not so much yeah. down on the on field the in front or garden. garden or whatever it is. Okay. If you get, I mean, I got a few little spices. Not a big deal. Of course you can. I got plenty of salt. Mm -hmm. Um, for the, the brown? The burnt yeah, that's that, burnt shenna. That's it? That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, okay. That is burnt shenna. Burnt shenna is a, an orangey brown. Oh, okay. And that together with with uh, either, you know, uh, mainly co uh, French ultramarine blue, but also cobalt, uh, will give you browns and grays depending on how much blue you put in. Oh, I got the... Um, the boards that go this way, and I also painted these that are kind of helping this fence stay up. I guess that's what they're doing. And now I'm just gonna go in and paint these posts that are behind, and they're kind of square. And here I think I might just go in and just do it wet on dry. The same colors? Same colors, French ultramarine blue, and burnt shenna mixed together on my brush. So I'm just taking this one that's way out here. This is probably going to be covered up by the mask uh, or by the mat anyway, but here we go. I'm painting it. So that's that one side. And since these posts are square and I can kind of see two of the sides, I paint the sides one at a time. And this goes down here. And then it down here. Put a little bit more of the blue in to not have it so red. And down here. And then on this one here, this side. And if you kind of lost some of your lines, don't worry about it. And, you know, put them in if you need to. And just make it up. Again, the fence builder is not going to be here approving the, you know, the drawing or the painting. These two kind of run together, but that's fine. And in the meantime, I think this other side probably dried so much that I can paint that in. And see, I just try to vary the color a little bit so that I can you can kind of see that it's it's a square post. Can you kind of see that? Mm -hmm. Um, these are probably too wet, so let's move over to this side. A little bit of burnt shenna, a little bit of French ultramarine blue, boop, boop, on the towel. And then we are going to take this side. And you can see how fast this goes because we massed out the snow so we don't have to be careful. So there's that on that side and then on this side. down to the snow and then I'll go in and fine-tune the color a little bit once I kind of have it on now I can see where it is and put a little bit more of the blue one so that I can darken it up here and a little bit down here maybe and behind I'm thinking they might be a little darker here they don't get much light in here can you see that just dab in a little bit of the blue into the brown mixture I have automatically. We'll darken it up. Let's see what we got going on over here. I think here I can probably paint in that other side. And on this one, let's see. There. Darker in the there. back is making it look a little more 3D. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right because, you know, dark pushes back and light brings forward in a case like this. So just going to go in and darken a little bit in here. And here, you know, these two posts, they kind of run together. Can't really see what's what, it, but it doesn't matter. It's not, we're not, you know, not meant to see exactly what's going on there. And I could go in. I just need to let it dry a little bit more. I could go in and um, just do a little bit with my 
credit card to just bring that edge out there. And this is really nitty gritty. It's not, you know, super important, but I can be nitty gritty if I want to. All right, so this needs to dry some more. You can see, can you see how wet it is? Leave that alone. Okie dokie, well, here comes the house. Um, and there again, same colors. And you know, I got some of the um, color of, of the um, trees there, you know, that I didn't paint around the house other than, you know, where I had already masked out. So I'm just gonna first with a light brown, and that's just French, you know, a little bit of French ultramarine maybe, but mainly burnt sienna, and it's just so I can kind of see what's going on. And I just wanna paint it in. So that's the one side of the house, right, going this way. And then there's the other side of the house going this way, and then I can see a little bit there, so it's almost like three different planes. And so I dipped into the blue because I'm thinking here in this corner, it'll be a little darker. And I'm gonna paint around there. And can you see how I'm leaving a little spot? Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that because, you know, I masked out as if there is an overhang. I think it's a covered porch and it's going around. So um, I'm leaving a little bit for a post to hold that up. And you don't have to be super like worried about that. And so I have this side a little bit darker. That means I have a little bit more blue in. Because I'm thinking this overhang, it also casts a shadow. So it'll be a little darker in there. I just do it to make it look a little bit more realistic. And I am careful because the bottom of these dark areas that I painted, they are the top of the snowbank in front of the house. You can see there's a huge snowstorm and it's, you know, going up and it's not exactly covering up, up the windows, but it's getting close. And so now while it's still damp, I want to run in a little bit of that darker color underneath just to also say there's a little cast shadow there. I could even do a little bit underneath the windows. I'm just doing that to just kind of dull it out, up a little bit. All right, so, so far so good. And I can put a couple more, little, little just like that. It's the log cabin, I think. But again, I'm trying not to go overboard. And now I'm reloading my brush with the uh, burnt shinna and just taking a look at that. Okay, the burnt shinna and the French ultramarine blue, and now I'm gonna paint in this little part. The, I don't know, is that the gable? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there, the gable. And, oops, yeah. Um, so again here, you know, that roof and all that snow is gonna cast a little bit of a shadow, and I'm putting in a few little strokes like that just kind of give it a little bit of a texture, not too much, just a little bit. And then here, this other gable also needs some color on, right? And it goes like, and actually I think I need to go down like that. So this thing doesn't go all the way over, apparently. And there's that, and I wanna darken it a little bit. I think this one here, might be a little darker. I can darken a little bit in here, like as if something's going on in there. 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 I think that's good. Don't want to go overboard. We have we have that nice snow we can play with later, and now we can just finish off these posts here because now it dried enough, and so. I want to put that a little bit more reddish, and I don't even mind if there's a little tiny bit of a line in between them. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. A little tiny, and if you don't get that, it's no big deal, but sometimes that can look kind of good. 
and this one here goes like this and like this and here I think my fence man built a different fence in mine. That <laughs> might be. That might be. Like I said, the sky is not coming out to check it. <laughs> no, exactly. There. Good enough in my book. Mm -hmm. And then I was just thinking, which can be dangerous, but let's mm -hmm. just... I'm thinking I might just want to do a couple of lines across here, you know, because I'm thinking, you know, it's boards or something that are going in this direction. There. No more detail on that. Oh, well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> can't stop. There, enough. Don't do any more than that. <laughs> All right? All right. There you have it. Um, so the only thing I didn't paint on my fence is my little mailbox. And, you know, I don't want it to be about the mailbox, but I do want to give him a little bit of color. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, quinacridone red, and mix it in with a little bit of burnt shinner just to give it kind of like a reddish brown. Um, and I'm just going to paint that in. It's right here. That's kind of fun. So right here. And if you don't have a mailbox, don't fret about it. You don't have to have a mailbox. Yeah. And then later I'll probably put a little shadow underneath where the snow is. But we can do that when we do the snow details. And a green bow, and somebody in another oh. class said uh, I should put the flag up. Oh, okay. yes. oh yeah. yeah. I don't think I'm going to do that, okay? <laughs> so, first of all, we have to split up our foreground and background. And so, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a big old brush with water on it, and I'm just going to go in inside this little road that's all snow covered, and I'm following that curve. And then I'm going into um, a cobalt that I have grayed down with some pink and a little bit of burnt shinner. Um, and a very little, I don't want like, you know, we don't want to lose this feeling that it's snow. So I'm putting a little bit on over there, away from us. I'm gonna rinse it out. And let's see, I've got a little into this snow bank. I don't really want that. Okay, so then I'm just going to drag it out and just a cobalt, and cobalt and a little bit of the pink and a little bit of burnt shinner, just so it's not too bright colored. But can you see that already? Yeah. So now we kind of split so that up, you. right? Yeah. Um, so we can kind of see, okay, so that's, you know, a little bit lower than the snow banks there. Uh, so that's good. And I'm kind of thinking the light's coming from this side. <sighs> what else do we need to do? So then, that was that. So that was one good thing. You know, I also forgot, you know, I have that little apple tree. Did I, did I tell oh, you about yeah. my apple tree here? <laughs> Got an apple tree in there. Who knew, right? Yeah. So, um, I also want to isolate, you know, like the foreground and then that the woods behind there. So to start with, I can just use that same shadow color and just put a little bit in here and it's kind of, I'm going to lose it, you know, and I, I put a little, uh, can you see I put my little chimney on? I don't know if you've got a chimney on yours. Um, and then here, and what I'm going to do here, man, did I pick a big brush for a little area. <laughs> That's okay. I want to make sure that I get this to fade out into nothing. Because I, I'm gonna deal with this, this whole area later. But now I have it split up. The front, I don't know if it's a garden or if it's just a field. And then here, I really should break down and get a smaller brush for this. Um, so a little bit on this side and then a little bit on this side, goes down like this. And um, up around the house, but then I want to leave the foliage of this apple tree to be lighter. So let's just get a little bit more shadow color here. And I want to use some of those. Can you see I got some textures already from the salt that I could kind of use? 
So I'm just having a little nervous like this, you know. There, so then I have indicated that, that those little branches and stuff, they're a little bit lighter than what's behind it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Um, and then, of course, I don't want it outlined like that. That's where I like to grab a bigger brush and then just kind of go in and then lose that outline edge. So then, can you see now I kind of already told you? Mm -hmm. You this is foreground, and this is a background. Yeah, the I'm apple sitting. tree is in front of whatever's behind yeah. here, right? That's oh, all yeah. I need. So now uh, it's just splitting up our bigger areas into s little bit smaller areas. Don't go to the n little detail or other than those little things we did there in the, f the foreground. But the rest, just a little bit at a time, is really all we need. Okay, so now I'm kind of I got now I got to get my guts up. All right. So, I mixed some colors already because, you know, I like to be prepared. So here I have indigo, you know, that very, very dark blue that is super concentrated. And I put a little bit of yellow into it. Transparent yellow I used. Not very much. So I have that on standby. This is my shadow color that I just used with the cobalt blue and a little bit of the opera and a little hint, just barely a hint of the burnt sienna to kind of not make it too bright of a lavender color. And then here I mixed another dark color of uh, French ultramarine blue and a little bit of the yellow. Still very much in the blue side. I don't want it to be too bright green. Um, I, I think that's not gonna work so well. So yeah, I gotta do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just dab in a little bit more moisture here behind the house. I definitely know I want it quite dark here behind the house because I want the house to stand out and I have snow on the roof that's going to be white. And so in order to that, for that really to stand out, I need to put something dark behind it. And it also makes sense. You know, the light is fading and this is the deep woods back here behind the house and they're dark. They don't get very much light. And so I think I want to do my uh, greenish French ultramarine blue, and I'm just going to dab in a little bit here around the house. Ava, did you say indigo with a little transparent yellow, and then the other one is French ultramarine yes. blue? With a yes, yes, and right now I'm using um, French. the uh, French ultramarine blue because, you know, the reason I love that for this kind of stuff is that, you know, it, granule, it granulates, and so it's going to give me a little bit of texture. I think I can st so do it not also. Much yellow in there. There's very little yellow in it because I really didn't want it. I mean, this is not a place where I want, like, super bright green. So I've just made it a little bit more greenish than what it is. And now, see, I'm going to go in. Actually, I'm going to go with my big old brush again just so I don't get too fiddly. Got a little hair there. And then I'm just going to pull it up like this. And right now, any time I leave myself these nice loose edges, I have all, all options are open. If I start getting hard lines, that's when I'm kind of obligated and I have to explain what they are. And you know, I might not be ready to explain just yet. And so I just kind of fade that out. And you want to make sure to get it that a little bit of that dark on both sides of that apple tree because otherwise it's going to look like that's a border and I don't want that. So I'm going to actually go in a little bit there. And now I could even go in and put a little bit of dark in between here and there just because you know there's some branches and stuff and then I'm going to take my little dark bottle and then just kind of spray into that so I get some uneven edges there and got that hair lift out a little bit there okay can you see how the house now is standing out a little bit more I don't like what I have going on right there you see, that's a light spot that I don't really want. Okay, so that's that. Okie dokie. And I was getting a ghost line there that I'm going to take away. There. 
Okay. Steps again. Yes. So um, first, I did, I did the the road with a little bit of that shadow color, cobalt blue, and um, the opera rose, and a hint of burnt sienna to gray it down a little bit. And I just wet the whole area, and then started from here where I wanted the darkest, where it's disappearing into the dark woods, and then I just kind of followed the contour of the road. And actually, I'm gonna doctor that up a little bit more, and I can probably do it now. I think it's dry. It's because you, you kind of also want to have some little, you know, just, I don't know, little ridges in the road or whatever. And again, I'm just gonna take my big brush because I want most of these lines to be very soft. I think snow is a little bit like um, clouds, soft. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. A little bit like clouds. And so these ridges will be wider here, right? That's going to help with the perspective idea, right? And then they get more narrow there. So there. Okay. So now it already has a little bit more direction. Can you tell? And again, I don't want too much hard lined. Just like this. So can you see how that oh, wow. already yes, that kind of really pretty. gives it, you know, a little something. I'm looking for the sleigh. The <laughs> sleigh, yeah, that's in my imagination. Lost in the yeah, snow. <laughs> lost in the snow. <laughs> here, here. All right. So I am going to. So I want the sky is going to be the lighter. Excuse me, Eva. Did yeah. you ever use the indigo when you were doing your? No, I haven't used indigo yet. Yeah. It's indigo I'm going to use for those little branches that are sticking oh. out under the snow. Um, and so, might take a little bit of this. So that's a lot of opera right there. Yeah. there I have, happen to have a lot of opera there, but yeah. you know, that's just how mine ha happened to be. Um, doesn't matter so much. So now I think I'll just have to um, get a little braver. And I'm going to start putting in a little bit of these trees. And that is the indigo. That is not the indigo. That is still only my cobalt, oh, uh, no, my French ultramarine blue. You could even use cobalt if you don't want it too dark. And uh, And I'm going to use some of this to go in and kind of, so I get some dark shapes and some light shapes. Up here, you know, that's silhouetted against the lighter sky. And then here, can you see it's like I'm negatively painting around some branches. And I can pick out here a little bit and lose some of the edges. I don't want to tell too much but I want to start giving you ideas of what's going on. So a few little indications, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Of I want to keep this quite abstracted and then I think I want to lose in between here actually. So it's a lot of a little back and forth, a lot of a little, no, a lot of back and forth. Um, so here could be another one that's in front of there. Can you see it now? Maybe a little bit in there. And just lose that edge. So I have some darker that pushes out then some lighter ones. This is kind of a weird shape, so maybe I'll fix this. There. There. That's better. That's better. I like that better. And again, loose edges. And then I can see another little guy here. So I'm trying to outline with a little bit of this mixture of, that could go down like that of uh, French ultramarine blue and the, a little bit of yellow that there's some, you know, 
some lighter trees and some darker trees in the background. And we don't have to tell a story about every single tree. We just want to bring out enough so that the viewer starts finding these trees that you didn't even paint. So a little bit down there maybe. And a little bit behind. Go in there. Mm -hmm. Can you see how I'm just finding a few little shapes, bringing them out, taking a look, and see does it look odd or was that a good choice? If it looks odd, right away you get your towel, damn it out. <laughs> <laughs> Say, oops. Like here, see there's a line there? Don't like it. But that is the reason why, and see how I can take it out so easy? Um, that is exactly why I'm using French ultramarine blue with a little bit of yellow and not the indigo. If I did this, I could do it with the indigo, but I can't lift it very easily again. And here I know that I'll have to change my mind, or, you know, I don't have to, but I, I know from experience that I will change my mind a, a lot of times when I see it and then I say, eh, that wasn't so good. And then I can just dab it out. I can, even if it dries, I can scrub it out. Um, but can you see how that already begins to say that there are some, mm -hmm. some woods mm -hmm. behind there? And if you need to fuss out, like some of these edges here, I think they're a little too hard. Go in and just mess them up a little bit. And that again is very easy to do because I'm using French ultramarine blue. So that's the next step. Do your little path here, then separate the background from the foreground on this side, and then start putting in a few little shapes that'll say that these are the evergreens. And I wanted to show you one more color combination you could use. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to say that this tree is still, you know, quite light, but it will be, you know, you have to decide what's lighter and what's darker if you have two things like here. You know, you can't have the tree the same color and and um, well, you can, but you can't see it then as the sky. So you gotta say what's lighter, what's darker. And it will, most of the time, the sky will be the lightest because you know that's where the light's coming from. So even though the tree is very light, you have to make it just a shade darker than the sky. So you can even use that lavender color and see here, I can go in and indicate some more trees up against the sky and you can vary the color a little bit if you want to. You use lavender? Yeah, that's that lavender that I made from the really? French, you uh, know, oh, cobalt. Yeah. And um, from the rose, right? And the upper rose. And the upper rose, yes. And a burnt sienna if you need it. And a little bit of burnt sienna if you need it. And so can you see, even though I keep this very, very light, mm -hmm. it's still, now it shows up against the sky. And I do like to have some little, you see those little holes I make in between? Mm -hmm. So that's maybe some little snow clumps and stuff. And so I'm gonna go and do a little bit more of this kind of stuff here. And if I think it gets too, I want it very suggestive. So a lot of times I like to just take my spray bottle and then spray into it a little bit and let it kind of fuss out and do its thing and lose some of the edges, and that way I think it looks more in the spirit of what I'm looking for. So can you see how already? And just mm -hmm. by even changing the shade of that lavender a hint, did a little bit more blue here, a little bit more pink there, and then that separates them a little tiny bit, mm -hmm. but not very much, not in your face. This whole area is background to this that we have going on. Mm. So we want to be clear enough that the viewer can kind of get the idea it's a lot of trees and they have a lot of snow on the branches but we don't want to go in and paint every single little detail and be too um too uh, too detailed and too too precise in that so go have a little fun with that